Hi folks, salutations. Timothy Keeler here. Here at the tavern. Boy, we miss all you guys. Nobody at the tavern, nobody on the stagecoach. Terrible times. Anyhow, I call it a day of panic. Some people call it a pandemic, but I call it a day of panic. We're talking about the Battle of Ridgefield today, April 27th, 1777. And what I remember about that day, I remember going to bed Saturday night and knowing that the British were up in Danbury and they were raising hell. And I know that we had a Patriot army that was chasing them, but they were in Bethel, here at one town behind. But some writers came over Saturday night and told us about the British up in Danbury and that we should be ready on Sunday morning, April 27th, to see what might happen. Sure enough, around 10.30 in the morning, Colonel Benedict Arnold came here and told us that the British were on their way down from the north, from uh, Ridgebury, and they were coming down North Salem Road, and they were coming right towards our village. Well, that put us into a panic, I'll tell you that. And so we gathered up all the plows that we could find, and wagons and firewood, and we built a barricade down at the north end, the main street, right at the corner of North Salem Road. We had a nice little defensive position, a little bit up on a hill, looking down, and we thought the British would come right around that corner and we'd stop them. Didn't know how many there were. Turned out there were 2,000, and we had about 300 Patriots behind that barricade, ready to put up a defense. Well, we built the barricade about 11.30. We could hear cannons in the distance. We could hear musket fire. Benedict Arnold told all the men with children and with wives to gather them up and get them out of the village, to get them out of harm's way. So we did that. And what I heard, what happened was, when that British, uh, first British force turned the corner, they were sent back. They were forced back by Arnold and his men. Arnold had a horse shot out from underneath him in that first little engagement. About a few minutes later, the British came again, but they came on three sides this time. Not only from the south, and not only down Main Street, also from the north side by Titicus. And so they actually crushed that barricade in, forcing all the Patriots out. They all ran south, down towards Norwalk, trying to get out of harm's way. Uh, didn't know what the British were going to do, but when the British came through that barricade, they did do some damage down at the church, down at St. Stephen. They found some Patriot supplies down there and pulled them out of the street. And they also took some cannons. They had brought some little ship's cannons with them. Three pounders, they're called. Oh, they're about this long, cute little things, but they make a racket. And they sent some cannonballs shooting toward the tavern. The British heard that the Patriots met here in the tavern, and sure we did. Uh, what a better place to be than a tavern. And of course, I owned it, so I always liked it when we were here. Uh, and they said that they would shake the Patriots out of the tavern. And so they took these little cannons and they started shooting cannonballs this way. First one hit the window in the parlor, knocked over a candle, started a small fire, and put out immediately. Everybody left the premises then at that moment, got out of the way. Evidently, a cannonball that hits your house at 200 miles an hour makes a racket. Who would have known? But in any case, that cannonball went in there, and uh, there were two patriots that were left up in our meeting room, our assembly room upstairs, and they were watching down Main Street to see the advance of the British. And sure enough, they could see the British starting to come, and then another cannonball hit, and they couldn't tell out, couldn't tell where it was. But one of those boys came down those stairs and was looking around in the dining room here. He knew he heard the cannonball hit. He couldn't find the place where it came in. Ah, it never came in. It hit the corner post, an eight by eight white oak corner post, 22, 24 feet high, and it moved at a half an inch when it hit, but it sure didn't penetrate inside. So on his way back upstairs to tell his friend that he couldn't find any cannonball hit, even though he heard it, a third cannonball hit. And it went right in above the door. Behind that door are steps going up to the second floor. About the fourth step up, that cannonball went between his legs on those steps, but didn't hit him. Caused a big flurry of splinters. And the ships, they call that shiver me timbers. When a metal cannonball hits your wooden ship, you get a shiver of timbers. Well, this man had his timbers shivered and he fell down those five steps to the floor. And his buddy from upstairs, worried about his friend, called out, 
Are you okay? Uh, I am killed, he yelled back up to his friend. Of course, he was yelling. He couldn't have been killed. Oh, and they dusted him off, and they saw that he was sure cut up a lot by the splinters, but still alive, and looked out the windows by the door and saw the British right at the corner of the property. Twelve British soldiers, muskets ready, bayonets fixed, and they were coming this way. I'll tell you, those two boys took off as fast as their little legs could carry them out the tap room door and down south and out of harm's way. It was a hell of a day here in Richfield.